I guess the brawl hangover is real. Well, at least for the Mariners. But even though last night's game wasn't fun, you still tuned in, and we greatly appreciate it. So let's get into the show. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Mariners listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more using promo code Locked On. It is Tuesday, June 28, 2022, and thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am your host, Tidy Gonzalez, joined as always by my co-host, Colby Patnode. We cover the Mariners over at InsideTheMariners.com. For Fan Nation over on the Sports Illustrated Network, be sure to follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore. Mariners. Follow Inside the Mariners at Inside Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez that's D-A-N-E, G-N-Z-L-Z and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. Be sure to also check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash control the zone. We post two additional podcasts on there every single week. And if this is your first time joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast, welcome to the show. If you like what you hear, give us a follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to this. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it. We got a really, really fun show today. We are, of course, going to start off by looking at last night's game, which was not fun whatsoever. We're also going to be talking about some suspensions, which are also not really fun. But we do have an interview set for the second segment of this episode with Sophie Dill. The Mariners fan who ordered Jesse Winker a pizza after he was ejected from uh, Sunday's game uh, amidst that brawl. Uh, we talked about you know why she ordered the pizza, what led her to that decision, and how it, the whole situation led her to an unlikely friendship. We'll be talking about that more later on in the show, so look forward to that. But let's get into last night's ball game. The Mariners, unfortunately, blown out 9-2. to two. They were down 7 to nothing at one point. Cal Raleigh getting on the board with his 10th home run of the season. This is the first time that Cal Raleigh has homered uh, in his career, and the Mariners have lost. So that streak finally snapped. The streak of the Mariners uh, starters giving up uh, three runs or less over the last, I believe, 24 starts was also snapped. George Kirby was not very good in this game, quite frankly. He uh, struggled with command quite a bit, was not locating whatsoever, and was giving up a ton of hard contact. He only got 11 swings and misses, which did lead the game, uh, but uh, certainly not at his best. Uh, what did you see out of Kirby in this one, Colby? Yeah, he just really struggled. Um, he was able to get ahead, but he wasn't able to finish guys off. A lot of 0-2 or uh, you know, 1-2 counts, and he'd give up base hits on. Uh, it was really, you know, the slider in the first inning was an issue. Couldn't really land it. And then as the game went on, he was able to put it in the strike zone a little more, but it wasn't very good. And, you know, he, he fell behind a few more hitters than you would normally see. Uh, the Orioles are a very aggressive team. Um, and they, they, uh, clearly they saw something. They, they were very familiar with his pitch mix or maybe he was tipping his pitches because they were not fooled, uh, really ever. Uh, in this mm. game. So, you know, it happens for a young guy. It happens, you know, to, to, you know, Justin Verlander, he can give up six against the Mariners. So it, it does happen. So it's nothing like too concerning, uh, but it was just, it was a bad outing for him. There, there's no denying that he just didn't really have good feel, didn't have his normal control uh, or command. Um, and it, uh, it just showed, I mean, he gave up back to back home runs in back to back innings. Um, so, uh, he just he just didn't have it, and uh, it happens. Uh, but uh, you know it's a bummer because he was on a nice little roll, and and you know the Mar he just he didn't give the Mariners a chance to win. Uh, now, part of that was because the Mariners didn't help him out when they could have. I mean, it was an absolute disaster for the team in the first two innings defensively. Um, but uh, yeah, Kirby just you know either the Orioles know he's tipping pitches or they saw something. Um, in in his scouting report, some kind of pitch mix issue or arsenal, uh, and they they were all over it. So uh, good on the Orioles; they had a great plan, uh, accompanied by Kirby having, let's say, forty grade command on all of his pitches. And and George Kirby, while he has good stuff, is not good enough to live on forty command. He needs to be 
you know, 50, 55 where he usually is. Mm-hmm. Um, so he'll, he'll bounce back His next start will be against Oakland. Um, we'll see if he can uh, make the necessary changes and, and, uh, it's, it's nothing to worry about long-term. So you mentioned it, you know, he didn't really get much help from the Mariners as well. It was a dreadful, uh, offensive performance. They looked lackadaisical and that's being generous quite frankly. And then on top of that, the uh, defense, as you mentioned, was uh, poor, uh, particularly in the first two innings of this game, particularly on a fly ball to Jesse Winker and Julio Rodriguez that was not caught and led to a run for the Orioles. It was uh, embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't really know how else to, to put it. It was just, uh, it was it was flat out bad, uh, flat out unacceptable. Um, just that kind of effort. It was, it was poor and, uh, coming off of a game like Sunday, uh, with, you know, emotions running high, uh, the Mariners were not able to, uh, pick up that energy, uh, going back home and, uh, they, they really needed it. It was kind of the opposite of what I thought was going to happen last night. I thought they were going to come in fired up after what happened on Sunday. And it was just not not that whatsoever. It was just the, the complete opposite. They looked burned out. They looked tired. They looked run down. They looked like they just did not want to be playing baseball last night. Um, so hopefully they're able to bring that energy uh, a little bit more uh, tonight. And um, we'll see You know how everything works out with the suspensions. Who's going to appeal? Who's not going to appeal? I would assume everyone's going to appeal. So they should be at full strength again tonight. Uh, but we'll see uh, how that all goes. But um, hopefully... Hopefully, hopefully the Mariners can get back on track here and not undo the uh, really good ro- work that they uh, that they did on this road trip, uh, on this past road trip where they won you know five in a row and started to make up a little bit of ground here. But you know you don't want it to go the same way how the last road trip to homestand stretch went, where you know they they made up quite a bit of uh, ground on on the road trip and then just absolutely fell flat mm-hmm. at home, which also is kind of the complete opposite of what you would expect because. You know, this team started out really, really well at home. It, it looked like they were really feeding off of the the home crowd, and it was giving them just an extra boost that they uh, that they needed. And now it's just the complete opposite. They look dead at home right now. The last two home stands mm-hmm. so far have been uh, rough, rough to watch, rough stuff uh, for the Mariners. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you you have Baltimore and Oakland coming in, and after that, mm-hmm. it's it's you know, San Diego and and Toronto. You, you yeah. need uh, you need to play well the rest of this week. Yeah, you absolutely need to because again, you know, we're still in the midst of this stretch. I know a lot has been going on over the last couple of days that is kind of distracted from what the ultimate goal is here. But the Mariners need to string together a lot of wins here in the next two three weeks before the All Star break happens, or they're going to be dead in the water. And now they're you know thirty four and th- and forty one. Uh, historically speaking, they, they, you know, there's still a chance. There's still a decent chance. Plus with the added third wild card spot, but, um, you know, they, 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 they need to get it together here because more, you know, another bad homestand, like the one that they just had, uh, the last time they were at T-Mobile park that to me pretty much kills them. I feel, yeah. especially, especially against the Orioles and the A's just can't have it. You got to be able to win at least for the next five, I think. All right, so we are going to be talking to Mariners fan Sophie Dill in just a moment. But real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Blue Nile. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as them with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. And Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft their perfect engagement ring, and each ring will be one of a kind. Looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing? Well, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7 available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. So make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Mariners listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement jewelry as well. Use promo code LOCKEDON, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, plus every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace go to blue nile.com today 
This episode of Locked On Mariners is also brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like, is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? And wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. So why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is $353 from a chain store, whereas with Rock Auto, it's only $216. Plus, Rock Auto is a family business, serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and their prices are reliably low for every customer. So go to rockauto.com right after you're done listening to us and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there, how did you hear about us box so you know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. You're listening to Locked On Mariners. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day, just like you do here every day. We greatly appreciate your support. Sophie Dill has been one of the biggest supporters of Jesse Winker and the Mariners Twitter community. And when she saw Winker was ejected during Sunday afternoon's brawl with the Angels, she wanted to cheer him up in the best way possible with pizza. But little did she know that a lighthearted gesture and one that she figured Winker would never even receive would lead to a national news story and an unlikely friendship. I caught up with Sophie on Sunday night to talk about how it all went down. And here's the full interview. Sophie, hello. Thank you so much for uh, joining me here on the Lockdown Mirrors podcast. How are you doing, first of all? Um, dude, my phone is cannot handle this. <laughs> I, I went out to play baseball with a friend for about an hour and a half, and my phone went from 70% to 45%. <laughs> it has been nuts today. So you and I have been following each other for a little bit, and I I saw when you first put the tweet out that yeah, you were wondering if it would actually be possible to get a pizza delivered <laughs> successfully to the visiting clubhouse at Angel Stadium. And, yep. uh, you know, I, 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 I liked it. I was like, all right, I'm intrigued. Um, and quite frankly, this was way more interesting than anything that was going on in the game. I was paying close attention to this and I was following along with the thread. And uh, I'm just going to ask you what first popped into my mind when I first saw your tweet is how did you come to this? <laughs> how did it come to like thinking like, yeah, I'm going to send Jesse Winker a pizza. <laughs> so you know this, he, he's, he's had a rough start with the Mariners. He's got a lot of hate and um, I, me and Ashley Lauren, who I'm sure you're also familiar with, mm -hmm. are like two of his um, biggest defenders. And so he gets ejected after the brawl. We all know what happened. I didn't know that that Scott Service and JP and I can't remember who else also got ejected. I thought it was just Wink. So I'm just imagining him like um, all alone in the clubhouse, you know, just like watching the game on TV. I don't know what whatever the heck it is that they do. And um, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get the dude a pizza and it's probably not going to work. I'm going to have, I'm, I'm going to door dash it. See if it works. There's no chance that it does. So I order a small pepperoni pizza. I Google the address to angel stadium, send it over and, uh, and wait. And then the, um, then the order was accepted and the driver texts me saying, Hey, Sophie, I'm on my way. And I am like, no, I I'm in Arkansas, but you know, Please, you know, take it to any gate and uh, <laughs> the visitors clubhouse and say it's for Jesse Winker. And I'm like, OK, this is where it ends. Dude is going to be saying, OK, I don't know what this is all about, but uh, he's like, and then he says, OK, great. I'll be there in a little bit. Simran Jeep. Uh, that's the uh, the the uh, delivery driver who uh, you coordinated all of this with, and and he came through. He was able to get the pizza to Jesse Winker successfully. In incredible. Do you know? Did he meet Jesse? What happened? Um, so he and I, a couple hours after it happened, um, after the tip stuff went viral, he uh, he called me. Um, after well, let me go back a little bit further. He uh, texted me and said, uh, delivered it at gate six. Um, I didn't know. I just told him, you know, to hand it to some ticket person. Mm -hmm. And so I said, wait, 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 wait. This is good and huge on Twitter. 
please send me your Venmo because I'm, I'm mm. not sure how long I'm going to be able to text you. And so he sends me his phone number. And so I text mm. him, like, hey, is this Simranjit? And he said, is this Sophie? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he said that he took it to one of the, the gates, like where they take tickets. Um, the the people at the gates, there was somebody there, he said, who seemed like he was expecting it. Mm. And so he told them to go to the security, like this guard shack. And I assume it's where like the players enter and, and park, you know, the restricted area. And the guards were expecting it and they took it from him. And I imagine they took it to the clubhouse from there. That's amazing. And apparently, Jesse really liked the pizza. What, <laughs> yeah. Where was it from again? Mountain, Mountain um, Mike's? Yeah, which I had never heard of. I, I was just looking for, you know, some place that sounded local. I didn't want to get Papa John's because I figured that'd be more of an insult than anything. <laughs> but, sure, yeah, I mean, fair. I was like, okay, yeah, Mountain Mike, so it sounds good. Mm. And I got a small pepperoni, and it, thinking that there was zero chance that this was ever going to work. And if, if I knew that this was going to blow up as much as it did, I would have got, like, an extra large. I especially feel bad that Skip and like JP were in there and they're like, <laughs> we don't get any pizza. We get a, a quarter of a small pizza. Wow. Thanks. Did, did you happen to see the, uh, the tweet from the best manager 1967 account? The, yeah. uh, the fake Scott service account, which, you know, I, I gotta be real. I, I have my doubts. I think that might actually be Scott service behind that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On a burner. <laughs> he's even he's even interacting with scott's daughter now at this point <laughs> like, there's, it's maybe it's gotten too far who knows that's a conversation for another time though so uh the, the thing that i love about this whole situation is with simranjit in, in, in particular and um all the tips that have come from mariner's twitter and you kind of yeah. showing you know because mariner's twitter it, it <laughs> it's an interesting place sometimes as i'm sure you know uh even today you know the the mariners were struggling after having three of their best players taken away from them uh because of this and uh you know so you got one house of the one side of the house is on fire but the other side of the house is is doing something incredibly great and sweet and genuine and wholesome and that Simranji, I believe, has, you know, and for context, we're recording this on Sunday night. Uh, but at the time of this recording, I believe that he's received something like 120, 150 yeah. tips or something like that on, on his yeah. cash app. That's incredible. And those are only the public ones. That's in, that's and incredible. I had a great conversation with him. Such a genuine dude. And um, I am so glad that, that that that's my favorite part of all this. Is that mm. that went viral and that he could get all these tips and he was he was so he, he said we are beyond blessed to to have been part of this and um he told me that his wife was the one who has the Venmo account that connected to her phone. Mm. And so he's out driving DoorDash getting texts from his wife because her phone is blowing up all of a sudden. And um yeah, I told him to take the the rest of the day off. I think he's uh, he's made his share today. Jesse uh, reached out to you and yeah. uh, thanked you for the pizza. I thought that was really cool. The Mariners have reached out to you. Uh, they publicly said that they're they're sending you a jersey. What are some other maybe cool things that have happened from this uh, for you uh, that you know over the last eight or so hours since uh, you ordered this fateful pizza? <laughs> <laughs> uh there have been a lot of people who have reached out and said, Hey, next time you're in town, next time you visit home, you know, like somebody said that they wanted to, you know, buy me a beer, or buy tickets to the game or, you know, like get mm. tacos from their local taco joint. And I've met a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of people who are just really, really great people. And Seattle Mariners Twitter is, is a thing. And, and I, I feel like there's a lot of, solidarity because you know mariners don't have fair weather fans and mm -hmm. you know like we're all in this together and uh we uh i, I feel like we all understand each other so there's been mm -hmm. an outpouring of of, of support 
Yeah, it's it's uh it's it's very much a, a family Mariner's Twitter. Yeah. Uh it's a dysfunctional one at times, but what family isn't? Uh it's a, it's <laughs> it's a it's an amazing uh it's an amazing community though, and especially for moments like this, the uh the memes and being able to even just do something good and, and wholesome as this. This was uh it just shows you the the love and the passion that this fan base has no matter all the pain that it's gone through even this year i love this story um it also made a pretty otherwise bleak day for the mariners uh yeah. pretty enjoyable uh, and you know yeah. it's funny on on the day that the mariners get into their first brawl in 15 years you to me were the mvp of this oh, thanks man <laughs> it it's was one small pepperoni pizza i appreciate it, that it all yes it all started with pizza uh i love it so uh where can uh people find you uh if they are unfamiliar with you because they uh they need to get familiar with you because aside oh. from ordering pizzas for uh mariners ballplayers uh you're actually a pretty good follow on twitter oh, as thank well. you so much i'm sophie ballgame s-o-f-i-e ballgame on twitter I want to thank Sophie again for joining me and sharing more on this incredible story. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Now, we've got suspensions to talk about. Major League Baseball has made its final decisions on the punishments for everyone involved in Sunday's brawl. Was justice serve? Well... No. <laughs> we'll talk about that more in just a moment. But real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And it remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It is the fastest and easiest way to check, check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online is where the game starts. So, Colby, we have finally gotten some clarity as to what's going on with the suspensions regarding Sunday's brawl. And as you and I predicted on yesterday's episode, Major League Baseball has screwed it up. So, the one good thing here is that Phil Nevin, uh, Angels acting manager, did receive the biggest suspension of them all, but it was only 10 games. He got 10 games. Jesse Winker gets seven. J.P. Crawford, Anthony Rendon, and uh, Don Cheedy, uh, one of the Angels coaches, got five games. Andrew Wants and Ryan Tapera got three games. Julio Rodriguez, Rizal Iglesias, and then uh, Angels coaches Ray Montgomery and Manny Del Campo got two games. And then Bill Hasselman got one game. Uh, but Julio Rodriguez got two games. And Colby, they didn't even really explain why. In the report, it says that he threw punches. But when they released... The uh, press release, you know, explaining kind of all the suspensions. They they had explanations for every single suspension except for Julio's. It just said for his actions. This is really really sus, right? Yeah. Um, at best, it looks like a major league baseball to uh, back up their umpires and say that they did the right thing in ejecting him in the first place. Um, because this is a very simple thing to to check. If they say Julio threw punches, where's the videotape? Yeah. Prove it. Because there's no shortage of cameras. They can check. And if Julio threw punches, they'll see it. And the fact that they wouldn't specifically say in their report that he threw punches seems kind of like a shady thing where you know they know that they probably don't have him on tape throwing punches. They're taking the word of, of the umpires. Um, and that is not something that the PA is going to be happy about um, because it seems like you're more interested in, in justifying the uh, weird decision of the umpires to toss and therefore you're punishing him as a result of that. Uh, so that that's the best case scenario is you're trying to cover for your umpires incompetence. Uh, the worst case scenario is Major League Baseball trying to send a message and that that seems like galaxy brain conspiratorial and then oh, you remember all those strikeouts that that julio had go against him on pitches that were clearly off the plate um i don't know it seems like major league baseball has an issue with julio of some kind and and maybe it's just coincidental that he's taken more strike threes that weren't strikes than anybody in major league baseball 
And they claim that he threw punches when he didn't. Doesn't seem like it, though. So I, I, I think, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say that they were just trying to back up their umpire's decision. Uh, but the fact that they didn't put in the public report that he threw punches but told him privately that, uh, to me, says they don't have evidence that he threw punches, but one of the umpires said he did. Mm-hmm. And Major League Baseball is just going off of that. And if that's the case and, and they can't show it on the tape, uh, Julio's got um, probably a, a great chance to have his reduced to one game. And honestly, it should be zero because if you specifically tell a player that he's ejected for throwing punches, but then you can't prove that he, in fact, threw punches, mm-hmm. the PA is going to be all over you. And this is kind of why Major League Base, the, the Players Association, wanted the power to, of suspension to be removed from the hands of major league baseball for incidents like this, where Mm. we've got to cover up for our umpires more so than, you know, administer the correct justice. Yeah. The, uh, the, cause when you look back at the tape, right. Julio was very much incensed, you know, Manny Acta had to hold him back. He was yelling at the angels, et cetera. But I, I've watched the brawl a few times. I've watched all the different angles that have come out, you know, some of the fan recordings that were there, you know, near the, the dugout and everything. And I haven't seen Julio really even in the pile, let alone throwing punches. Uh, so I'm not sure when that could have happened because I, I, I know that when Winker went in and first met with Rendon and the rest of the Angels bench, you know, J.P. Crawford was the first to come over, and Julio did come out. He was one of the first people to come out, but I'm pretty sure that Manny Acta got him out of there relatively quick. And mm-hmm. so, obviously, you know, we don't have every single an- uh, angle at our disposal, but Major League Baseball does. So, either they have seen something, or they're just using the privilege of being able to to see every angle as an excuse to suspend Julio for some other inexplicable reason um but yeah i just everything that i've seen it just seems like manny acta was able to diffuse any sort of issues on julio's side before julio was able to do anything um and i i'm not really sure where the the punches thrown could have happened but maybe it did i don't i don't know i just after watching it back and you know back and forth a, a couple times here now I just I, I I don't see anything that suggests that Julio did anything deserving of a suspension, but it's it's really strange. Uh, we'll see. You know, I said earlier on in the show, we'll see. You know how um, the Mariners players that that were suspended want to handle this. How Julio, how Jesse Winker, and how J.P. Crawford want to go about this. Uh, it seems like likely, you know, more likely than not. Uh, that they are going to appeal these suspensions, which would keep them active until uh, a suspension is finalized. Um, And they might be able to get the suspension reduced. They might not be able to. Major League Baseball has told the Mariners, however, that they can stagger the suspensions if they want. The only thing, though, the caveat with that is they cannot add a player to replace the uh, player that's suspended. So they would have to operate with a 25 man roster if they choose to stagger the suspensions and not do them all at once. I want to end on this thought. Um, You know, you look at these suspensions, you go down the list and you heard all the names that I listed there. A lot of them are angels coaches, which Mm -hmm. when you are handing out suspensions to several coaches from that team, you are admitting that, the angels as an organization conspired to make this happen, conspired to start this brawl, to incite this brawl, to throw at Julio Rodriguez's head, to throw at Jesse Winker. So at that point, why wasn't the organization itself punished? And I know the response or the quick response to that, or the quick rebuttal to that is, well, didn't they get punished because they lost several players to, to suspension and they lost several coaches to suspension. But that doesn't that only impacts the clubhouse that only impacts the major league team no this is an organizational thing this is something that clearly even the general manager the assistant general manager everyone in that building was aware of and allowed to happen everyone shares some form of responsibility anyone that is there and has decision making powers is responsible at least partly for what happened on sunday and therefore to me 
the Angels should have been stripped away of draft compensation and or slot money for the draft or the inter or for the international signing period yeah. and find as well as an organization. Yeah. Uh, Major League Baseball's actions did nothing to dissuade another team from doing this again. And yeah. that's the unfortunate thing. They, why would a team not do this because they're going to lose their manager for 10 days? Who cares? That's not, that's not a loss. So basically the angels get, you know, patted on the back for kind of introducing this dangerous uh, loophole into the game uh, because major league baseball is spineless and doesn't want to, you know, do its job and protect its players uh, from action that can only be described uh, as um, what's a nice word for this um, cowardly yeah cowardly uh, you know uh, it's just yeah there's no better word for it. it's cowardly uh, it's against the spirit of the game so to speak uh, um, and for all the unwritten rules guy it's weird that how many of them are so silent all of a sudden because this is clearly mm. an unwritten rule uh, you don't yeah. you don't send a lackey out there to be your hit man uh, in the first inning. Yeah. So Phil Nevin wants to talk about baseball is this grand tradition, and this is how baseball polices itself. This has never been how baseball has policed itself, and the and major league and it comes with a stamp of approval from Major League Baseball. Yeah, it's really disheartening. It's exactly what we talked about yesterday. Um, this now sets a precedent for the rest of the league that you can get away with this. And yeah, you're going to, you're going to suffer some, you know, consequences, but nothing that is going to deter you. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very minor stuff at at the end of the day. Something that's not going to ultimately deter you from doing this Mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Basically major league baseball had a bigger issue with Jesse Winker flipping people off than the angels orchestrated plan to throw at the head of one of its young stars and then hit, one of its better players. Yeah. Yeah. Priorities. Yeah. And look, we can absolutely, you know, um, criticize Winker for how he acted. You know, he shouldn't have acted Mm -hmm. like that. He should absolutely be, you know, punished for that. And, uh, and, you know, we can say that, you know, we're, I, I'd like to think that we're pretty objective here, even as fans of the team, uh, that, you know, Jesse Winker deserved to be suspended. So did J.P. Crawford. Julio, I don't understand at all because I've just I've watched the tape multiple times and I haven't seen a single thing that that suggests to me that Julio should have been suspended. If any third, you know, I said this again on yesterday's episode that if any Mariner third Mariner should have been suspended, it should have been probably Justin Upton. Um, but even he really didn't do a, a ton there. But yeah, it's um, yeah, I don't get the Julio thing, but. You know, Winker and Crawford, they absolutely deserve it. That doesn't mean, though, that the Angels should ultimately be let off the hook here. They, they're the ones that started this. They're the ones that started it on Saturday night, thinking that something was there that wasn't there. And just going off of that and using that as some sort of way to pick a fight for no good reason, honestly. And so, you know, things happen the way that they did. It's over now. It's over and done with. Major League Baseball is as disappointing as ever, and that's the story. We're basically where we expected to be, and uh, now the Mariners just got to figure out the best way to uh, maneuver through it. Well, that's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidy Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow Inside the Mariners at Inside Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. It's D-A-N-E G-N-Z-L-Z and Colby at CPAT11. That's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen of the day, just like you do here every day. Now make your second listen of the day, Locked on MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts just like us. And with that, have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.